guys, Kalila here, and welcome to another video. I know, I'm not showing my face today, but that's because I'm doing a tutorial, which I should have done a while ago. I posted a video of me wearing a skirt, a tennis skirt. I'll show a picture here, and I set out to make a tutorial. That was like two months ago. So, two months later, here is the tutorial for the tennis skirt, okay? The colors that I'll be using today for this tutorial will be this color. It is called Lime. It is 24 seven cotton by Lime brand. You guys know this is my yarn, okay? So that is what I'll be using for my yarn. And now for the other tools, let me show you. I keep all my supplies in here, okay? So you will need a four millimeter crochet hook, or actually, let me go back a little bit because this is a measurement based pattern, which means you could technically just use whatever yarn and whatever size hook that you want to use. As long as you follow the steps of this tutorial, you'll be able to make a skirt with any yarn, okay? So you don't have to use this exact yarn. Just so you know, use whatever yarn you have, use whatever hook corresponds with that, okay? Okay, so for me, with this yarn, I'm using a four millimeter hook. This is the Aries hook in the Streamline Swirls by Furls. You'll also need a row counter. I actually need to get another one. I am currently using both of these for two different projects. Here's my row counter. You don't need a row counter, but I highly recommend it if you want to keep track of your rows, if you want to recreate the skirt that you'll be making. You also need some scissors, any scissors works any snips works with this, so scissors. You also need tapestry needles to weave in all those funky ends. You also need stitch markers, always stitch markers, a must. And last but not least, you'll need measuring tape, tape measure, whatever you call it, because since this is measurement based, we will be using measurements. Now for this pattern, I have already written out all of the measurements and all of the row counts that I'll need, but I will guide you guys so that you can make your own, of course, because it's a tutorial. Oh, also a written pattern will be available down below. So if you want to follow along using the pattern, then definitely go ahead and grab that right quick. And let's start this tutorial. Now, the first thing we'll be working on will be the ribbing part of the skirt or the waistband, I guess you could say. So the waistband of this skirt. To do that, we're going to chain 15. Alrighty, now that we have 15 chains, we are going to slip stitch into every single stitch across. Alrighty, I have slip stitched all the way across. The slip stitches always lay flat, so if yours lay flat like that, that's, that's just how it's supposed to be. So now that is your row one, even though you don't need to count your rows if you don't want to. So now for the second row, we're going to slip stitch into the back loops only. Okay, the second row is done. I have slip stitched back loop only. So now you are going to repeat row two until this can fit around your waist or until it almost fits around your waist because slip stitch stretches a lot. So you technically don't need it to fit all the way around your waist, like unstretched. If you stretch it and it can fit around your waist, then you can stop. 
So continue going into the back loops only and remember to not drop any stitches. It's so easy to accidentally skip the first stitch when you are slip stitching. So try not to drop any stitches. You should have 14 total stitches and continue working in a back loops only slip stitching until it can fit around your waist or almost around your waist. Now that the waistband is finished, well, mine is finished, so hopefully yours is finished too. If it's not, feel free to pause the video, okay, okay. But now that the waistband is finished, we have to slip stitch it together to make a circle because we'll be working in the round for this skirt. To do that, you're going to take one end of your waistband run it, run your fingers down it just to make sure it is twisted in the correct direction. Take the other end of your waistband and then just put them together. If they don't match up, then just stretch it <laughs> until they do. And then you're going to slip stitch these two ends together to form a circle. you have slip stitched everything together, the two ends, this is what it should look like. And now you have a full circle. And now we're able to start working in the rounds to actually start the body panel of the skirt. We are going to do a foundation row. I don't really count this as my row because it's just for me to make stitches to go into instead of just these spaces for this first unofficial row. We will be single crocheting around this entire panel. Once you have finished your single crochet row. We're gonna be at the end of the row, back at the seam. So to finish off this row, you're going to slip stitch into the first stitch that you made. So slip stitch in that, into that to close the round, and then you're going to chain one, and then turn your work. Now you're going to turn your work after you chain so that your seam can be straight. If you don't turn after you chain one, your seam will be crooked. We don't want a crooked seam here, okay? So chain one and turn after every single row. We're round now that we're working in rounds. So now that that part is finished, we're going to just put our waistband together and try to get it as even as possible. I like to use my tape measure so that I can get an accurate Measurement, start from inside the seam, and I stop measuring that at that point, and this is five and a half inches, so then I'll go on the other side, and this is five and a half inches as well, like just five and a half inches. Like if I scoot that out a little bit, it's five and a half inches. I'm going to place stitch markers on each of these ends, and that will be the place I increase. I will explain that to you afterwards, but Find an equal amount on each side. You don't have to use a tape measure. You could just eyeball it because it doesn't really matter unless you're trying to line the seam up perfectly in the back. So get two stitch markers and place them on each side. Alrighty, now that my stitch markers are placed, let me explain why they're there. Get your tape measure and measure around your hips. Once you get your hips measurement, you're going to take that number and chop it in half. If your hips measurement is 30, you're going to chop that to 15. And that is what you will increase to at each corner. So right here where the stitch markers are, are the only places where we will increase to get our hips measurement. That might seem a little confusing, so let me show you what I mean. You're going to start doing half double crochets, okay? 
And this is the start of your actual row one. If you want to count the single crochet row, you can, that's fine. But I don't like to count that row as row one. So you're going to half double crochet until you get to the stitch marker. Now we have made it to our stitch marker. So you're going to take that stitch marker out and you're going to increase into that stitch. One and two. And then you're going to place your stitch marker right at the last stitch that you did or the second increase stitch. So make sure you place your stitch marker back here every single time in the second increase stitch that you did every time. And now we're going to half double crochet all the way until we get to the next stitch marker. All right, we have made it to the second stitch marker. So I'm going to take that out and put an increase into that stitch. So two half double crochets into that stitch. That's one and two. And remember, place your stitch marker back. You'll place it into the second increase stitch that you did. And always keep that stitch marker at that point every time. Now you're going to half double crochet until you make it back to the seam or whatever center that you have. <laughs> made it back to the center and now to finish off this round I'm going to slip stitch into the first stitch that I did to close that round and I'm going to chain one and turn. Now I'm on round two. At this point you're going to repeat this round half double crocheting all around and increasing at the stitch markers point. Remembering to place the stitch marker back at that point and you're going to continue increasing at these points until it gets to half of your hips measurement. Now my hips measurement is 42 inches so chop that in half that is 21 inches. I'm going to increase until this width is 21 inches. So let me show you what it is right now. This is currently almost 12 inches, so like 11 and three quarters. And I need to increase until it is 21 inches wide. So I will continue doing that. And you continue doing that as well until it reaches half of your hips measurement. Okay? Okay. Already I have gotten the increases that I need. And once you have all of the increases, that you need you can get rid of these stitch markers because you don't need them anymore this is the last time you'll be doing those increases on the sides the next part that we'll be working on will be the ruffly part of the tennis skirt and how we're going to get those ruffly edges or i guess not edges it's just part of the skirt but for this row we're going to increase into every single stitch so one half double crochet increase into every single stitch all the way around yes it's going to start getting piled up with the stitches but that is what will create the ruffle effect so one half double crochet increase into every single stitch all the way around Once all of the increases have been done, it should start to look like this. It's going to start ruffling just a little bit, but that's not enough rufflage in my opinion to get the tennis skirt look. So for the next row after this one, I did 11 half double crochets and then one increase. But if you want more rufflage, then you will have to do more increases, which means less half double crochets before the increases. So I did 11 half double crochet, one increase. You can do 
nine half double crochet, one increase, or five half double crochet, one increase. But I'm just gonna do 11 half double crochet and one increase, and you can do that as well, or you could do less, or you could do more. But for me, I'm going to do 11 half double crochet and one increase. have finished the second row of increasing and this is what it should start to look like let me flip it up so you guys can see it top down it should look all ruffly just like this which is so perfect and I'm trying to get the effect where the tennis skirt usually has like a straight part and then the roughly flowy part so that is what I'm trying to emulate and I think I think it's turning out pretty good so this is the last increase row that I do. You can do more if you want, but just remember that it will be really, really, really <laughs> roughly if you do that. I think this is enough to give the tennis skirt effect. And let me flip it back. From here on out, you're just going to do one half double crochet into every single stitch all the way around until it is the length that you want. Your skirt will definitely get a little bit looser, like the ruffles will get a little bit looser and more flowy. You just continue doing half double crochets in every single stitch all the way around until it's the length that you want. I kept going for about 12 more inches and then I stopped because I want it to be a short skirt, but if you want it to be longer, you can do 15 inches, 20 inches, whatever you think will look good. So continue half double crocheting until it's your desired length. And then I will come back and show you guys the finished product. And I'll show you what you can do to make it look like a real, real tennis skirt. There's a little part that that's optional, but I'll explain it later. So do your half double crochets and then I'll come back and show you what I do to achieve the real tennis skirt effect. Alrighty guys, at this point, my skirt is finished and so should yours. If you're not finished, of course, finish before getting, going to this next step. So this is what the skirt looks like fully. It is very, very ruffly and you can definitely leave your skirt just like this at this point. It will still look like a tennis skirt. It will look nice, but it won't have very defined pleats. And I know a lot of people no tennis skirts as having defined pleats. I'm going to show you how you can do that. First, you're going to need to grab your stitch markers. So be sure to do that. Grab your stitch markers and grab your tapestry needles because we'll be doing some sewing. Now to start to get the pleats, we're going to scoot the skirt up and you're going to place it at the front. So whatever you want your front part to be, place that facing upward and then scoot your skirt down. Well, I'm scooting my skirt down so you guys can actually see until it gets to the actual ruffled edge where the ruffled edge begins. Now you'll see like these little spiked areas where some are defined a little bit and you're going to determine how many pleats you will actually want on your skirt. For me, I want about three or four. So I'm gonna start at this edge. I'm going to pinch the area between the straight part of the skirt and the ruffled part of the skirt. I'm going to pinch that area and then fold it down just like that. And then I'm going to do the same thing to wherever else I see like a defined pleat. So another one is like right here and I'm gonna fold that over and then maybe right here and fold this over. And of course you can look and see like, hmm, I don't like that distance between this first pleat that I made and the second pleat that I made. So you could just smooth it out and then pick up any area that's nearby and then fold that part over. And then you can look and say, okay, I like that. 
then move on to the next pleat you want to create just like that and then continue until you have the amount of pleats that you think you would want for your skirt and this is what it looks like let me scoot up scoot it up a little bit this is what i have i don't know if i will change it up or not but this is what i have so far and i kind of like it now once you have the folds that you would like i have four folds here i'm going to grab my stitch marker and i'm going to take out four stitch markers now that i have my four stitch markers i'm going to grab the top of this fold make sure you don't grab the other side of the skirt so just pick up the top of the fold and stitch mark it together so that the fold stays in place just like that you're going to do that for all four of these folds or pleats because now they're pleats so just do that for all four of these stitch mark it in place so that it doesn't move out of the way just make sure you don't pick up the back of the skirt just the front and this is what you should have and now at this point you can maybe try your skirt on you can see if you actually like the placement of your pleats i'm not going to try it on i tried it on last night and i like where i placed them even though they're ran they're randomly placed right now but i like the way it looks now so make sure you do that don't pick up the bottom of your skirt make sure you can put your hand underneath and it doesn't catch or snag and if it just if you do that and it starts to unfold it's fine because it's going to fold right back since you stitch marked it at the top of it these might look a little janky when you're doing it but it'll come out very very clean trust me now at this point after you stitch mark everything together you're going to grab a tapestry needle i prefer metal ones but you can definitely use plastic ones thread your yarn through your needle and just like that i'm going to actually thread this until the ends meet and i'm going to sew it like i'm actually sewing sewing and not just the crocheting type of sewing so i'm going to make a knot at the end of my thread just so that the yarn is doubled like this doubled like that so when i sew it's going to be super 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 sturdy but of course you can do it however you'd like once your needle is threaded you're going to take your first fold and where the stitch marker is just put your needle through that just like that and you can hide the knot anywhere you'd like i'll just push it inside and then so the top of this fold you can definitely remove the stitch marker at this point because you won't need it anymore since this will hold it in place continue sewing the top of the fold until it is as secure as you like it now that that is finished the pleat is now in place so you can literally move it all around and everything unfold it and it's just going to fold right back how it was and you're going to repeat that process for every single pleat that you have just make sure you don't accidentally sew your front panel to your back panel because that that wouldn't be good okay make sure you have space guys all of the pleats have been sewn if you can see here i'm just opening them up and they're all all sewn at the top so now 
the defined pleats will always be here. I will show you pictures of the full ensemble so that you can see what the skirt actually looks like on. I'll just put pictures like there should be pictures on the screen right now. And that is what it looks like. And that is what yours should look like. And I hope this actually helped because a lot of you have been asking me how I make my pleats so defined. And like I said, you don't have to do this, but I think it's very helpful. You can do less, you can do more, you can do it all the way around. I don't do it in the back because I don't care about the back. I just feel like the front is the best part that will need to be defined. And thank you guys so much for watching this tutorial. Remember, there is a written pattern down below. So if you want to grab that so that you can always have this with you, then go ahead and do that. And I'll see you guys next time with another video. Bye.